Hello, so I just found this uh, footage <laughs> that was promoting um, fur farms. It was like it was a legit YouTube video that was all about how, uh, like, here's a fur farm. Like, look inside a fur farm, like, with mink, right? Um, and they're sort of just selling it as if, like, this is normal. And I think anyone sane watching it will be like, what the fuck is going on? So anyway, uh, enough to chat. Let's play the video. Okay, so here we go, by NAFA. It couldn't be NAFA. That's actually what the company's called. I can't... This is the working mink farm at the Nova Scotia Agriculture College. It's used to teach students <laughs> about caring for animals. And the day-to-day... -day <laughs> no, it isn't. They, they fucking... <laughs> they use their skin for fur. Ray McInnes is the fur unit manager, and he starts his days early. What a brave guy. Mink farming is labor-intensive work. Or the, even more reason to continue it then. Fuck you know, what is this? The tasks that take place at this farm are similar to the tasks that occur on mink farms across North America and in Europe. There's loads of them. They're saying it's all right, because there's lots of Most them. Most days begin with preparing the feed for the mink. Most days? <laughs> this <laughs> is feed. It is a mixture of cereal, fish, meat and water. <laughs> what the fuck? Most of the protein comes <laughs> from the byproducts of fish oh, or fuck. chicken that's not fit for you. <laughs> it's just any old animal minced up. Would otherwise be sent to landfill. It's fuck highly you. concentrated and mixed into a thick paste that with cereal and water. It's then Very delivered well. to the farm where it's transferred into a feed cart. Ferrets normally eat like, sort of like other small rodents and stuff. Like. <laughs> the bin used to deliver the food. The bin, like it's a complex device. Disinfected to prevent bacteria from building up inside. <laughs> a mixture of bleach and water is used to ensure complete cleanliness, and then it's hosed down. They're talking about how they clean the we bin. Make sure that we have There's a bunch this, of it. Um, what? Um, right now it's every four days. <laughs> this um, fucking the surreal morning, as fuck. It's every second day when we get fresh feed. So we want to make sure that all a filmmaker has been employed to make this about how they're good, and they, they did a segment on how do we clean the bin. She was so fucking insane, that is. This is weird, man. He's got a car and a tube. This is factory farming at its finest. Fucking a car and a tube. Some ranches two or three times a day. And they become accustomed to being fed this way, and usually they get accustomed to it. You break their spirit for long enough, you'll fucking destroy them. <laughs> They'll get Fish used to Fish based. Um, a lot of um, Fuck, products similar to what would be in the pet food industry. So when we buy... Um, similar. At the grocery it's store, also made out of animals a bit. The rest of the carcass, the, the tail, fuck, the bones, head, and everything. There's still lots of good meat on it, so that's... He's a guy who's proud of his work, isn't he? It's it's the old uh, skinning the animals it's in the cages. <laughs> fuck. The mink's diet can vary from farm to farm. Oh, uh, they haven't even got a system in place. Seasons. Just whatever's when the females cheapest. If are pregnant, for instance, the diet will be modified a bit to accommodate. We feed them more when they're pregnant. That's how kind we are. <laughs> Fuck off, man. Ah, uh, this is odd. Seasonal demands. For example, during lactation. They fucking. This wasn't made that long ago. It's all HD. This looks like you've shot on like a Z7 or some shit. Z1. I mean, this is like within the sort of like the last nine years, and they're using fucking default wipes. What kind of filmmaker? It's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do a job on how your uh, your mink fur factory farm is <laughs> a nice place. Fall on the floor, so you can see it's it's there. Uh, the mink are coming out. They'll eat a little bit at a time. He just said they have to get the consistency right so it doesn't fall on the floor. So we want the feed to be fresh. They're we talking about this like it's interesting. <laughs> and if at the end of the day no. there is feed left over, it's taken away and cleaned up. Well, if fucking it hooray. Out, we'll just, just pick it up. This isn't special. You're meant to do this shit, you dumb fuck. It's like, yeah, we uh, stop them from getting diseases. <laughs> fucking right. That's that's not like a bonus. It has, um, it's a constant flow water supply, so it's actually gravity fed from the water tower. No. With circulating pumps so that it remains fresh, um, circulates throughout the burn. Um, the pipes are just have a fucking hose with little valves on it going all the way around. It's so weird. Imagine living like that. Imagine it, man. Like... Mink farming is seasonal. Breeding <laughs> is done in late February or early March. During that time, a good portion of the day is spent putting bedding into the pens. People make good money Five doing this sort of voiceover are work. Nest boxes, where the females will have their litter of young. <laughs> They're referred to as kits. The kits are born in mid-April or early May. 
Annette Murphy says the pens are of a comfortable size. The pen size, um, basically we have a pen size that's... that's um, Go on. That kind of replicates uh, what they would have in the wild. Fuck off! Uh, for you the boxes, they have little. No. We have boxes here. The cage in the wild. represents they burrow, what they would have in the wild. Holes. Uh, they would actually have their kits. And um, fuck off! In these man, boxes, we that. actually put a divider in, so it's smaller for them to. How does she sleep at night? She's warm. such Once a dumb cunt. Once the kits begin to grow, the nest boxes are taken out, and the kits are separated from the female. Just like Sometimes in the wild. When they start taking their kits out, we realize that they they want a larger area for them, so we can actually take that out and provide that for them. As the kits grow, they need to be checked thoroughly. They walk around on the wires. They don't even put floors on them because it'd be too expensive and they'd have to clean them. It's so they can shit through the wire, isn't it? And then all of the breeding shit on this year. And so also her uh, kit records, uh, well-being and stuff, will all be recorded on this guy. Like this soundtrack is like for a prison movie where they're meant to escape. <laughs> it's like we've like got any to large escape from the concentration from camp. From time to time, one or two may get ill in which case a veterinarian may be called in as appropriate to assist. The information on the illness, medication... They must chew out the fucking the cages. They they're so desperate the they find a way out. They don't want to fucking the be there. Pen. If there's any uh, health treatment that we do, a vaccination would be a general herd thing, so we wouldn't identify each one. Everybody would get vaccinated. But if there's an incident where someone is treated with antibiotics or something, we'll actually put a card, a record card, in addition to this. Imagine being so his girlfriend and having to listen to that voice. So that way, if anybody else follows up from there, they'll know. Just the most system. boring man who Once kills mink grow, for a living. They can be moved to their <laughs> own pens, which is a very simple. Process. Yeah, what we do with the mink is that we uh, we put them in them. <laughs> a nice easy way to do it is to uh, use the catch cage. No. Um, this way, we don't have to. The catch cage. Yeah, we use the catch. That's the name for it. Yeah, it passes the catch. The catch cage is not the official name for it for all the mink farms across North America. What the fuck is going on, man? He puts him in a hole, he gets him out, fairly easy. closes the cage. And from there we can safely and easily distribute them to become transport fur. Transport her to another cage, taking her ID card with her. Other tasks on Just the like farm that, can involve Perfect. anything from checking <laughs> but, the health of the herd to ensuring that all equipment is in good Just looking at the herd. coat like, oh, this, this will make some money. manure collection system. To ensure that the entire process of farming They do this shit with foxes and stuff, man. Friendly. Like, it's... The manure from the mink. The intelligence of dogs, at least. Turned into fertilizer that so you is can then relate. spread on the land to grow crops. Oh, that's nice. So all the shit in the fucking drain pipe becomes. Ugh. And then people go, eh, you can't be vegan because you use mink shit in your potatoes. And it's like, oh, come on. Canvas, such as <laughs> uh, grounds maintenance, we'll dump leaves and things in there. And then that. Compost or manure is oh, a little pan to the right. Judder, judder, judder. Should have shot at 50 frames a second, mate. This is the awful. The best mink pelts come from mink that are well cared for and fed a healthy Just the fact that someone's like, they would have got paid a filmmaker like a few thousand to like put this shit together over like a month. The Agriculture like. College's mink uh, farm is designed as part of a program to help students so on the Tuesday, are we filming the uh, the bin? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. And then on the Wednesday, we'll do the uh, the bit where we can do the catch cage. <laughs> the guy's in on Wednesday with the one with the voice. Oh yeah, him. We taught them things basically from handling, catching, bedding a mink, um, removing manure. All those skills. Students learn everything. The fact that we have to learn it is just proof that we're not fucking omnivores. We have to train ourselves to be like that. It's not instinctual. The euthanizing cart, which is <laughs> filled with carbon monoxide gas, no! is driven up just and down the rows of pens, and the mink are taken from the fuck pens off. and placed into the cart. The euthanizing yeah. car, and it's Victorian. It's, it's like a fucking Sarah steampunk design. The steampunk fucking concentration so camp. carbon monoxide gas, which is a very oh, Holy gas. shit, man. We fill the box to a concentration. How do they so live with themselves? Into it. They just fucking kill animals all day. Oh, and then we put them and in the we'll chute. Continue to add gas throughout uh, the process as we're adding the mink to the box. And that will euthanize them. Just keep adding the gas, keep adding the minks. The They'll be all dead. Pretty quick. The stress they just stress of out. To transport for, you know, them long their entire life because we kept them in a cage and fucking. Practical <laughs> and fast method. Um, the mink aren't transported anywhere, so they're simply taken from their cage. We don't have to, we used to slaughter him at a place, now we got the old uh, euthanization car. The ranch is surrounded Much by handier. a security fence. Whoever invented that, fucking dragon's den. Call it the euthanization car. 
any diseases uh. which may be brought in by curious wildlife looking for food. Raccoons and other animals can enter a farm and spread disease. You're the free animals, you're not allowed in. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Fences prevent this. Mink farming is a lot of work and requires daily planning and preparation. Oh, boo hoo! You fucking kill mink and get paid for it, you fucking sick bastard. The mink carcasses are composted. No, and this is so is weird. In addition to fur, farmed mink provides fine oils for skincare. <laughs> Fuck off. You just want to read, like, you got to learn the ingredients, man. When you start seeing this shit, you're like, I want to know everything they're putting in everything because this is fucked up. For a wide range of products, from pet food to tires, paint, and even cosmetics. Wow, Naffa. Couldn't have been Naffa. Naffa since... Naffa than what? <laughs> and they didn't even fucking get... They didn't Photoshop out the middle of the six. Look, it came back up. Oh, no, it's the beginning of the video again. They didn't even Photoshop out the middle of the six. That's how much Naffa care. Oh, my God. Why does that exist? Why have, it's like they've interrogated themselves and just shown themselves up to be massive fucking idiots. Like, my God. That is going on in the world right now. And it's just a fucking like... And then people are like, oh, you can't be violent towards these people. There's people like fucking Gary Roski and people like that, man, going in and just destroying this shit. They make it, like, they probably rise the price of the fur industry. And then that fucking means that only rich people can wear it, which makes it more fashionable again. It's fucking, that's a vicious cycle. It needs to be destroyed completely, not just fucked with financially so they have to rise the prices of it. This shit needs to be shut down legally. Like, this should not fucking exist. This is animals bred in cages with, like, globs of feed out of a toothpaste and a man on a little truck. Like, it looked like they employed, like, three or four people there. It's like, yeah, we got this down. This thing... The thing that will shock you if you ever go into a slaughterhouse, a functioning slaughterhouse and see one, is that this whole idea of, like... You, you've probably seen footage from, like, earthings and stuff. It's changed since then. It's not even, like, people anymore. It's fucking robots killing them most of the time. We live in a world where ro animals get lined up and killed by robots that we created because morally we can't fucking witness it. Like, and it's cheaper, that's the other thing, to make their bodies as cheap as possible. And then we call ourselves omnivores. Fuck, man. That video was... The fact that people aren't embarrassed that they do that is what concerns me. I don't think you'd want... Like, if they were like, we're going to make a film here, it's like, oh, I don't... F Paul will do it, the guy with the voice. He He's fucking stupid enough to not realise that this makes him look like a complete daft cunt who's never really fucking made any ambitions or plans for himself in life and ended up fucking farming ferrets on a little fucking truck while getting fat and his wife starts to have a divorce with him because his voice is too fucking boring. Fucking, was his name Paul? <laughs> Steve or whatever. It's one of those sort of names, wasn't it? Oh, mate. No offence to Pauls and Steves. <laughs> They're all right, that's what I'm saying. They're these all right people who do these all right jobs, but this one happens to be fucking farming mink. <laughs> For the fur. We use a lot of the body. We, uh, we basically just mince up the fucking pulp and stick that in shampoo. Fucking, they'll buy it. <laughs> Saves having to pay as a waste material. You... It's ah, uh, the, the visuals have ended, so show's over. But just fucking think about that, man, and just think about like if people knew about this, would they still be doing it? And we need to get this shit out there. So, if you're watching this, please share it, and don't just share it on other little vegan channels. Like fucking show it to the people you know who buy this shit. Don't be like, oh, we're vegan too, we're vegan too. Oh, here's the thing. Oh, I like that, I like that. I want to see it getting spread to the people who fucking, like, have never considered it before. These people just living in a bubble like, oh, they wear fur. That's sexy, like in Game of Thrones. That's their first thought. They don't go, oh, that was fucking animals in cages with fucking Paul on his scooter, drip feeding them fucking minced up fish and <laughs> crabs and fucking, oh, mate, the whole thing was just dark. Do you know what I mean? Imagine if we treated humans like that. Not that that should have to change anything, but just to make it relevant. Imagine they treat dogs like that. I've got other footage of other fur farms. I collect this shit, man, to put like make compilations and stuff. But uh, there's one with like foxes. They're the fucking like just these animals that you've never seen like sort of in a tame situation because they're so wild. They're these beautifully wild animals, and they fucking trap them in like Canada and electrocute them in the arse, and they keep them in these little cages, fatten them up first, get the surface area up on the fur, get their coats good with the old fucking... That's why they're feeding them bits of fish for a fucking oily coat. 
So they sort of like it's thick as hair and stuff, man. There'll be all this. They'll fucking have Paul on his scooters, fucking whatever her name was, the scientist who just goes, yeah, this seems to be working better, keep doing this, or, oh, this has made them all a bit ill, stop doing that. I mean, <laughs> fucking what a weird operation, man. Anyway, I could ramble on, but just uh, share this shit, man, and share. It. don't just share it with the people who already know it, because who cares, man? Like, fucking send it to the people who are just like, oh, yeah, fur's nice, fur's nice, oh, fur, yeah, oh, that's expensive, ooh, really, he bought you that? Like, get it into their fucking brain that this is the reality behind it. People aren't willing to look that second level deeper and just be like, fuck, this is what's really going on. There's animals in cages. And a fucking guy in his, like, fucking <laughs> uniform dungarees. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. It's fucking, someone needs to just, like, um, make this shit illegal. That is the only way to solve this full time, is to make it illegal. And the only way to do that is to change the minds of people so they vote against it. This should be a fucking priority, really. It's not hard. You just say, Paul, mate, you got to go and work somewhere else. And then Paul fucks off and becomes like, he works in a pub and tells people stories about how he used to feed mink. <laughs> Fuck you, Paul, you fucking mink-feeding motherfucker. He's not the problem, though. It's the people buying the fur, and that's why we need to educate him. He's another victim of it. He's just in a bigger fucking cage doing his little tasks that he's been trained to do. That's when you go a fucking level deeper. That's fucked up right there. Anyways, man, I'm out. <laughs>